Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at typography within Bootstrap. What does that mean? Well, typography is just how do we display text? This includes things like fonts and font sizes, font weight, those little types of things. Now, most things are going to be pretty standard. And in fact, I want to show you real quick how we're going to do headings first. So over here, I have it set up. I have my container and row and column, just like we learned about in our previous video and how to set up our grid system. So just one column in this case, and I have a series of H1 tags just to describe and show you what those look like. Now, this is the exact same way that I do it inside of HTML. So if I'm using regular HTML5, I have my H1 through H6. Save this real quick. Come over to my demo. And you can see I have H1, H2, each one as the number gets up, the font size gets smaller and smaller. This is using the same font as my regular font text for my paragraphs, and it just makes it a little bit bigger and easier to stand out. Now, one challenge that we sometimes have is sometimes I want to make some text bigger because it's more important. However, I know semantically I should not be using H tags. That's because those are for headers. Those are saying, hey, this is header one, header two, header three. And I'm only going to nest my headers. So H3 is going to be under an H2. H2 is going to be under an H1. And they're talking about important parts and subsections, kind of titling them for my web page. But I want to make it bigger. And so I got to have a different way. Luckily, Bootstrap is going to give us two different ways of doing this. And come back to my source code, create a column. And they have what I like to refer to as heading classes. Now you might think, well, what does that? Well, here I have some code that's going to show you. So I have my heading classes. Notice that I'm always using a paragraph here, but the class is H1, H2, H3. It's going to give me the same size as my heading tags, but it's going to make it so that it's a paragraph and therefore semantically I'm correct and I'm not trying to fool what the search engines might not like. An old trick many, many, many years ago for doing search engine optimization was to put everything in an H1 tag. So it all looked important to Google and Yahoo and places like that. However, the search engine people are pretty smart. They figured out that's what people are doing and they quickly penalize their site. So this allows us to have bigger text without being penalized. Let's go over to browser real quick, reload, and see what that looks like. Here I am back inside of my browser, and I have my headings and my heading classes. Notice they look identical, and that's because they basically are, okay? So great little tool we have there. But there's still one more way to control our sizes. And this is great, especially if we want something really big, something to really stand out. And that's called a display class. I have my display classes. And so notice now I have a third column with my different display classes. I'm going to head back over to my browser, reload it. And you notice that, hey, I've got my third column, but look at these displays. They're all much bigger. So this gives me a lot bigger value to display. So if I really need something to stand out, like I said, a title of a page, or maybe an important piece that I want to grab your attention, I can use this display to find the appropriate size and then use it in my context. All right, let's show you a couple other things that we can do that are very cool with our typography. All right, so I'm back in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to do a new div for a new row. And so I'm going to use a div for a class of column as well. Only have a single column in this case. You're going to see why. I want to have a bunch of text. So I just grabbed some text from a Lorem Ipsum generator. You can see this here. I cleaned it up just a little bit. If I save this, come back and reload, you can see I have my text here. I have some bold. I have some italicized stuff. No big deal. But I want that first paragraph to stand out just a little bit more. I'm going to go to my very first paragraph, class and specify it as a lead, L-E-A-D. So this is my lead paragraph. 
save. I'm going to go back to my browser, reload it, and notice that my text is just a little bit bigger. So this is often seen in a lot of old magazines and places like that where that first line or maybe the whole first paragraph was just a little bit bigger and it's designed to help make it a little bit easier to read, catch your attention, see if people want to continue to go with reading. Great example of it right here. And you can see how that's working. It's just, it makes it a little bit easier to read. And so I always like that. So that's an example right there. What I want to show you next is doing block quotes. Now, block quotes are common and regularly built into HTML5, but Bootstrap has given us a few features to make it easier to work with. So I want to show you those real quick. So I'm going to come over here, and this is for a new row. So create a new column, new block quote, and class. And I'm going to do block quote again. Yes, I know it's a little bit redundant, but this is the way they like to do it. Inside my block quote, I'm going to put a paragraph. Here's some important quote for you to read. Save this. Go back to my page. Reload. And you notice, here's some important quote for you to read. The text is, once again, a little bit bigger. A little bit heavier font, if you notice. It's just a little bit more bold. It's not bold. It's just a little heavier. And it just makes it so it stands out. It's a little bit easier to read. And that's what the block quote class does for you. You might think, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, let me show you a couple other things real quick. So let's say I wanted to attribute this quote to someone else. Well, I might go in and just normally say, hey, here's a paragraph I kind of put underneath. But then it's, the name is the same size as the quote that I have. So I'm going to do two things real quick. I'm going to start off. I'm going to show you this just by duplicating it. After my block quote, I'm going to have fig caption, which is short for figure caption. And this is going to get a class block quote dash footer. So this way we know, hey, this is attached to the block quote. And I'm just going to simply say paragraph in here, Mr. Tom Morrow. So here I have my quote and I have my figure caption format my documents so it's a little bit cleaner. Go back to my browser, reload. I have my block quote. They're of the same size. Those the block quote parts are the same, but my figure caption has gone in and put a dash in between it and the block quote. This is done automatically for me so that it makes it so I know there's a separation. Then it gives me my text, my text for my who wrote it or whatever I want to put underneath there is a little bit smaller and it's a little bit lighter. It's great that we can attribute this, but the important thing is to quote, and that's what it's doing for us. Back inside Visual Studio Code, I'm going to make one more copy of this. I just want to show you something. Take this figure, say class, text dash center. You might be going, oh, this is going to center my text. Well, you'd be absolutely correct. Come back to my web page, reload, and you can see that now the whole thing is centered. A little bit hard to tell because I'm in columns and it's just fitting inside that column, but it is centered. You notice even my dash is centered. I don't have to have it centered. I could also do it at the end. So text dash end, reload. You can see it moves the, the quote just a little bit, but the whole attribution is really moved. And you might say, well, why does it use end and not write or something like that? Well, Bootstrap is actually mindful of the fact that in some languages, they are read right to left instead of left to right. And so it puts it at the end of it, always the end, whatever the end is, whether it's on the left or the right-hand side. Now, for most languages, it's we read left to right, so it's going to put on the right-hand side. But if you're using one of the languages that's read right to left, it would move it to the left-hand side. So that way there's no confusion and it can handle different types of languages and in different areas much better, as you can see right there. These are some basic typography things that you can use in Bootstrap. Now, of course, there's more. You can go into the docs and you can find out things about creating lists, and whether ordered, unordered, and either inline or block level. There's a lot of different things that you can look at for working with your text. These are the big ones that are most commonly used. I want to show you those.
So I hope you found this video helpful. We've got another video coming up next on how do we create that navigation bar across the top. What does that mean and how do we use it? So stay tuned. Look for that. It should be about here. We also have a whole video playlist on learning how to use Bootstrap. So if you just found this video, you can check it out to see all the videos in this list.